morning uh, so let me start with the second module okay uh, that is uh, in the second module uh, we will be discussing on uh, stacks uh, so two important linear data structure the one is stack and the other one is queues okay and uh, the other one is uh, uh, recursion uh, so how you can implement the recursive functions using stacks and also we see that uh, uh, we will be discussing on the applications of stacks and the applications of queues so mainly the three topic which will be discussing in this module is stack recursion and the queues now moving on to what is stack so already i think uh, when we were discussing in the first module uh, with respect to different types of data structures so we saw there was uh, data structure is broadly classified into two types one is primitive and non primitive so under non primitive data structure it is again classified into linear and non linear data structure so stack is a non primitive linear data structure okay uh, how data is organized in stacks so what i uh, want to say is uh, when we discuss so many data structure whether it is array stack linked list queues and all uh, trees graphs uh, in all the data structures the main objective is to store the data or store the information only the thing is how it is stored how it is organized what are the operations you perform on those data structures in retrieving the data or in modifying the data that's all the difference is okay so finally in all the data structures we store the information okay but how it is organized effectively what operation you perform on those data structures that's all makes difference from one data structure to another data structure so today we will be discussing on um, what is stack okay so how stack is being defined okay what are the different operations you can perform with respect to stack and how you can implement the stack so what are the different ways of implementing the stack so coming to the definition uh, so stack is basically an linear data structure in which the items or elements uh, are added or it is removed only from one end okay so that means the either the uh, pushing so uh, generally uh, insertion is called as pushing and deletion is called as pop okay so either inserting an element into stack or popping an element from the stack is done from one end of the stack which is called as the top of the stack okay so it is like uh, stack is like uh, one uh, pile where the bottom end is fixed so you either add the element or remove the element from the stack only from the top end so the size of the stack uh, grows topwards or it uh, decreases bottomwards but the bottom is fixed okay so that means either the insertion or the deletion is done only from one end of the stack which is called as the top of the stack in short form we can call it as tos and inserting an element into a stack is called as pushing and deleting an element from the stack is called as pop assume you have a stack called s okay so which consists set of elements starting from a0 to an minus 1 uh, where a0 is the bottom element and an minus 1 is the topmost element okay and uh, generally uh, if you take any element ai so ai is on the top of the element ai minus 1 okay and uh, definitely if the size of the stack is n so your element position will be either, uh, will be greater than 0 and it will be less than n so that is how the stack is been arranged and it is an order list okay where elements are arranged in one order starting from the bottom of the stack till top of the stack and uh, what you can see in this diagram so this is an example for stack so where you can see one end is fixed the bottom end is fixed the top end uh, uh, so you are inserting or deleting the element from the stack from the top of the stack so uh, so initially uh, the stack will be empty okay so no elements will be there then what you do push the element onto the stack let me take a is the element which i am pushing onto stack so now your top is pointing to a now if i want to insert b into the stack or push b onto the stack i have to increment the top okay and push the element b okay so now your top points to b and please remember the top is always uh, the position which points to the top of the stack element whichever is your topmost element in the stack that will be pointed by the pointer called top or what we call it as top of the stack so again uh, if i want to push c increment the top and uh, push the element c 
So now your top points to C. Now again, I want to perform push operation where I want to push the element D. So now you are uh, so increment the top and uh, 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 push the element D. Now your top is pointing to D. Now again, I want to perform push operation where I will increment the top and push the element E. And so in the fourth, uh, so in the fifth uh, column, what you can see now currently there are five elements A, B, C, D, E, where A is the bottommost element and E is the topmost element. Now, now I want to perform pop. Pop, pop means removing an element from the stack. So when I remove an element, so what happens? The top automatically gets decremented. Removing means the element. So here, whichever is the topmost element, that has to be removed first. You cannot remove the element randomly or you cannot remove the element from the bottom. Always the removing the element from the stack will be done from the top of the stack. So now which is the uh, topmost element? E. So that means if at all, if you are performing pop, which element will be popped out first? That is E. So once you pop out E, now the top will point to D. So currently after popping, so you will be left out with the four elements. So initially your top is pointing to C. So this is how you can perform the push and the pop operation with respect to stack. And what you can see, uh, uh, push and the pop operations are generally uh, performed onto the stack depending on uh, the existing elements in the stack or depending on the size of the stack. Okay. And as you can see uh, here, the elements are pushed in a particular order. Okay. A first, then B, C, D, E, and then popping. If at all, if you want to pop, which is the first one to pop out E, then which one you have to pop out next D, then C, then B, then A. So once you pop out A, then again, stack will be left out empty. So what you can see, uh, the way in which you are performing the push operation and the pop operation with respect to stack, uh, here, the element which is pushed last one will be the first one to be removed or the element which is pushed first will be the last one to be removed. So that is the reason stack works on the principle of last in first out. OK, so the element which is pushed last will be the first one to be removed. So that is the reason it is called as last in first out or first in last out. OK, but most of the times we use this principle, what is called as LIFO. And coming to the operations, what is associated with the stack? Because every data structure has its own operations, OK? Uh, based on the particular operation, you can perform on that particular data structure, whether inserting or deleting or display, whatever operations you do with a particular data structure. So similarly, in, uh, in the stack data structures, we have two important operations. One is called push, and the other one is called pop. So what is push? Inserting an element into a stack is called as push. And please remember, at a time, you can push only one element. You cannot push more than one element onto the stack, nor you can remove more than one element from the stack. At a time, pushing means only one element, or popping means one element. So push means inserting an element into a stack is called as push operation. Similarly, pop means deleting an element from the stack is called as the pop operation. So what you can see, so in the previous example, we saw A was pushed, then B was pushed, then C was pushed, D was pushed, and then E was pushed. And then A E was popped. So basically, we had got five push operation and one pop operation. So the diagram which you can see in this diagram, uh, so in this figure, is basically the demonstration of five push operations and one pop operation. So after the pop operation, currently what is left out in the stack? D, C, B, A, where which is your topmost element? D, and it is pointed by the pointer called top. Now, there's something, so uh, how this stack is useful, okay? So generally, stack is useful when we want to maintain or when we want to indicate the order of processing of the data, where certain steps has to be postponed until other conditions are fulfilled. So suppose if you want to keep track of the order and if you, you cannot finish a particular job until and unless you finish another job, then you can push those jobs into the stack. OK, for example, assume uh, I'm working on a project. Uh, let, let me call that project name as A. So now uh, when I'm working on that project, A, uh, I will push on to stack. Now, uh, immediately I want to move to an another project called B. And I cannot complete A before the completion of B. 
so what i do i will push b on to stack now if at all if i want to remove a i i have to remove a, a only after i remove b that means only after the completion of b then i can complete the project a similarly if i now uh, 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 there's one more project called c which is depending on b and i can complete b only after the completion of c so then again what do i do i push c on to stack so like this what happens is if you want to maintain the order of processing certain data and you have to postpone their uh, conditions uh, uh, you have to postpone their decisions until some conditions are fulfilled then the simple thing is you just push on to the stack and now in that last case what you can see there are five projects a b c d e where d cannot be completed before e then c cannot be completed before d b cannot be completed before c and a cannot be completed before b so in that case when you push on to the stack you cannot pop an uh, element randomly you have to always pop an element from the top of the stack now which will be the first uh, project which has to be completed that will be removed from the stack that is e only after you remove e then you can remove d so that means the project d is completed because e has completed then uh, if at all if d is completed then only you can complete c so such type of decision we call it as the postponed decision and if you want to keep track of the order of the data processing then you can push on to the stack and in the same order you can pop it now coming to the representation of stack how stack is represented okay or what are the uh, different ways of representing the stack so stack is basically uh, represented using two ways one is using linear array and the other one is using linked list singly linked list okay so so as on now uh, singly linked list you are not ar aware so only what we will discuss is using linear arrays so you know what is linear array it is a one dimensional array is called as linear array where you will have one row and multiple columns and all the elements are stored in the consecutive memory location so such type of data structure we call it as the linear array so stack is also a data structure but which is implemented using arrays or linked list so as of now we will take only the arrays how to implement the stack using linear array so if at all if you want to implement the stack using linear arrays you need two uh, variables so one is the top okay so which is like a pointer which always points to the top of the stack okay and the other one is the max stack size it is a variable which points to which is a variable which holds the maximum size of since you know when you, when you talk about linear array what comes in your mind is the size so here also when i say stack you need to specify the maximum elements you can push on to stack or what what is the maximum number of elements that can be stored in stack so that will be stored by a variable called max stack size so max stack size points to the last location in your stack so assume uh, in this example your max stack size uh, so uh, uh, assume your max stack size is 8 so that means how many elements you can store in the stack or what is the maximum number of elements you can store it in the stack 8 and since it is a linear array your location starts from zero your index position start from zero so what will be your last position in your stack it will be 7 so that means that 7 position will be pointed by the pointer called max stack size so if at all if your max stack size points to 7 that says that your stack is full now uh, using these two variables you can do push and pop operation so please remember max stack size is only used to indicate whether your stack is full or your stack is empty and your top is the pointer which always points to the top element in the stack now assume uh, 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 initially your stack is empty how do you indicate your stack is empty initially i have not performed any push operation onto stack so you have an empty array okay or empty stack so how to indicate that empty stack your top is minus 1 that says your stack is empty because your location starts from 0 so uh, below the zero or uh, uh, before the zero what is what will be your location assuming your top is minus 1 okay if at all if your top is minus 1 that means your stack is empty you have not pushed any element onto stack and if at all if your top is equal to max stack size then the stack is full so you, so two conditions you can indicate if top is equal to minus 1 that means your stack is empty so there are no elements in the stack 
if your top is equal to max stack size minus 1 because max stack size will be 8 because totally how many elements you can store it in the stack 8 but what is your last position in your uh, stack or in your array it is 7 so if at all if your top points to max stack minus 1 that means your stack is full no more you can push an element into stack so this is how you can represent the stack using arrays so as you can see this is also an array but only the thing is you need two information one is the top information and the other one is the max stack size so currently in this example there are three elements in the stack a b c where a is the bottommost element and c is the topmost element so where your top should point your top should point to the topmost element which is nothing but it points to the location 2 and what is the element stored in that location 2 it is c so your top points to the location 2 or top points to the element c and your max stack size always points to the um, last location in your uh, stack so which is your last location it is 7 now let us see how we can perform push and pop operation with respect to functions or with respect to i mean to say uh, what we can see um, so let us take uh, uh, these two things so one is um, whenever you perform pushing an element into stack so before pushing an element into the stack first thing is you should check whether the stack is already full or not okay if there is a space in the stack then only you can push if the stack size is already full filled up or already the number of elements in the stack has reached the maximum size that means you cannot push an element into the stack so whenever pushing an element into the stack first you should check the condition whether there is a space in the stack or not okay so there is one that checking is called as overflow so what is overflow when pushing an element into a stack we need to check whether there is a space for the new item if there is no space then the stack is called overflow overflow means already it is filled up okay no more pushing can be done with the stack so that condition is called as overflow so what is overflow what do you mean by stack overflow when you are trying to push an element into the stack when the stack is already full then such condition is called as overflow okay mm -hmm. so when the overflow condition occurs when top reaches maximum stack size minus one then the overflow condition occurs so what is that boolean is full of stack why the return type is boolean is either it will be true or it will be false so what is that it is whenever the top value is greater than or equal to max stack size minus one so what is the last location in your stack which you can enter the element in the stack it is max stack size minus one so if at all if your top is pointing to that location or more than that that means your stack is overflow so whenever top is greater than or equal to max stack size minus one that means already your stack is full no more push can be done with the stack that means stack is overflow similarly there's one more uh, uh, condition which you need to check whenever you are popping an element from the stack that condition is called as underflow so what is underflow can you remove an element for a stack which is empty so if if the stack is empty what does it mean you cannot perform delete operation or you cannot perform pop operation so that is the reason whenever you delete an element first you should check whether the stack is empty okay please remember so whenever uh, we delete an element from the stack we need to check whether there are elements in the stack if there are no elements in the stack then it is called underflow so what do you mean by underflow when you are trying to delete an element from the stack when the stack is already empty then such condition we call it as underflow so removing an element from an empty stack is called as underflow so please remember so before you pop an element from the stack first you should check whether the stack is empty or not how do you indicate that or what is that condition called underflow okay and how do you check that condition so if at all if your top is minus one so please remember your top ranges your top position can range between zero to max stack size minus one if at all if your top is less than zero that is initially you would have initialized your top is equal to minus one so if your top is less than zero or top is equal to minus one that means your stack is underflow that means you cannot perform pop operation because your stack is empty 
only if you have elements in the stack then you can perform the pop operation so please remember so whenever you do push operation you have to check for overflow condition overflow condition means checking whether the stack is already filled and whenever you delete an element from the stack you should check the condition called underflow underflow means the stack is empty so if the stack is empty you cannot perform the pop operation so please remember the condition so checking the overflow means your top value will be greater than or equal to max stack size minus 1 underflow means your stack will be less than sorry your top will be less than 0 or your top will be equal to minus 1 because less than 0 means what minus 1 so this is how uh, we can create the different operations with respect to stacks so what are the different operations that are associated with the stack so generally stack can also be treated as an abstract data type where you it will have list of operations associated with each objects where each object is a stack and what are the operations that are associated with the stack one is create one is like push one is pop then display then is full is empty so these are all the operations that you can perform with the stack so what is the first operation you can perform on the stack is create so initially stack will not exist like arrays the way you linear arrays are created stack also need to be created okay initially your stack will be empty so only after you add the elements into the stack it will be created or you need to specify this is my stack of size so and so so that is what we call it as the stack create so how do you create the uh, stack using a function called create s so s is of s is the si uh, stack of maximum size called max stack size so uh, let me define as define max stack size is 100 so what do you mean by 100 so um, your stack can have 100 elements so maximum number of elements that can be stored in the stack is 100 and your location will start from 0 to 99 so your top value can range between 0 to 99 so then you can you uh, create this uh, stack using the structure okay using type def struct open the bracket then int key so what is int key here it is the element uh, uh, it is the element which you are going to insert okay and it will have the value so here every element what you are inserting into the stack consists of a key value so that we are uh, that member we are defining it as the key if at all if you want other fields you can add but otherwise for a normal stack we have we can have only int key then close the bracket then define the structure uh, tag name which is called element now you have to create an stack variable of type element so element so uh, come out of the uh, structure definition then uh, use the tag name what is your tag name element what is the name of the structure variable stack it is an array of structures please remember because it is an array so stack is not one variable so stack is an array of variables so how do you create array of structure variables so the tag name followed by the structure variable what is the name of the structure variable stack of what is the maximum how many stack elements you can store max stack size that is of 100 so stack of 0 will be your first element stack of 1 will be your second element stack of 2 will be the next element so each element in the stack we call it has an structure variable then you can initialize your top is equal to minus 1 this is another variable please remember it is an variable that has to be used whenever we define a structure initially your top will be minus 1 and when i say top is equal to minus 1 that means stack is empty because once you start pushing an element to the stack your top should be incremented please remember before pushing an element to the, into the stack your top should be incremented first and then the element should be pushed and before popping an element element is popped first and then the top is decremented so that is the reason initially your top should be minus 1 so let us see how we can perform push and op or pop operations so let us see with the algorithms and as well as the function so first we will see with the push operation so as you, as you know that pushing an element into the stack means inserting an element into the stack is called as push operation so what are the information you need to have for a push operation one is the stack to which stack you are pushing and you need to have the topmost element where your top is pointing to and what is the maximum size of the stack 
and the element which you are going to push. So four information is required to perform the push operation. One is the stack to into which you are pushing an element, and the topmost position in the stack, and the maximum size of the stack, and the item which you are going to push. So now, so before pushing, what is the first thing you should check whether the stack is already filled. Okay. So that means if the stack is already filled up, you cannot push. So before pushing an element into the stack, first you should check whether the stack is already filled. So how do you check that? If top is equal to max stack, okay, then the stack is full. So max stack minus one. Sorry. Because max stack will be uh, like uh, I mean to say. If max stack is equal to eight, so when your top points to seven, already the stack is full. So because your location starts from zero to seven, means total eight elements. So if your top is equal to max stack minus one, that means the stack is overflow. Then return. So you cannot push an element. Otherwise, otherwise means still there is a space in the stack. So that means your top is within the max stack minus one. Then what you have to do is. First, you have to increment the top. So, how do you increment the top? Set top is equal to top plus one. So, increment the top by one position. Whichever is your previous top position, increment the top by one position. After incrementing the top, then you have to store the element in the position pointed by the top. So, how do you perform that? Item equals stack of top. It is always right hand side is assigned to the left hand side. Your item is assigned to stack of top. So whichever is the whichever position in the stack is pointed by the top, in that position you will store the item that is called item. So you will insert the item in the new top position. So pushing is over return. So this is how push is performed. So what is that you will do first? Check whether the stack is overflow. So, what is the condition used for checking the overflow? If top if top is equal to max stack minus one, that stack is overflow. That means you cannot perform push. Otherwise, if the condition becomes false, then there is a space in the stack. Then what is that you do first? Increment the top by one position. So and then insert the element in the new top position and then return. So this is how push is performed. So now let us see how to write a program or a function for this push operation. So the name of the function is called push. So when you push, it will not return anything. So the return type is void. You are just inserting an element into the stack. So the return type of the push is void. And what is the argument you are going to uh, pass it to the push function? The element which you are going to push. So that is the item of type element. So item is the element. Item is the new information which you are going to insert of the type element. Your element is a structure tag name, and item is a structure variable. Now, first thing, what is that you should check if top is greater than or equal to max stack size minus one. So, what does it mean? Stack is full. So, stack full is a function where we would have written a stack is full, or we will print some error message or some. Uh, what you call uh, now stack is full, uh, so you have to wait till the stack becomes empty. Some printf message. So that function is called as stack full. Otherwise, otherwise, what is that? What does it indicate? If top is less than max stack size minus one, that means there is a space in the stack. You can push the element into the stack. So first, what you will do? So now look here. So here it is plus plus top. What do you mean by plus plus top? It is pre increment. So when I say pre-increment, first the top will be incremented by one, and in the new top position you will store the item called item. So that is, so please don't write top plus plus. If you say top plus plus in the current top position only, you will store the item, and then the top will be incremented. It is not like that. Please be careful. Whenever you perform the push operation, before pushing an element, first you should increment the top by one position. And in the new top position, you have to store the element. So it is stack of plus plus top. So plus plus means it is pre increment. Whatever is the current top position, it is there. It will increment by one position. And in the new top position, you are going to store the item. Either you can write like this, or you can write like this. So instead of like this, what you can write? So you can say top. Uh, so top 
प्लस प्लस और प्लस प्लस then stack of top is equal to item so this is all this is another way you can write if you want if you get confused by writing like that statement so if the if there is a space in the stack first you increment the top so in this case if it is in a normal variable whether it is plus plus top or top plus plus does not make difference because whatever is the current top position it will increment by one position and in the new top position you will insert the item so that is how the push operation should be there first you increment the top and then you push the element into the new top position so this is how push is performed now coming to the other operation what is called as pop so what is pop so deleting an element from the stack is called as the pop so please remember whether it is push or pop it is always with respect to top of the stack okay it is always with respect to top position whether pushing also is done with respect to top whether popping an element from the stack also is done with respect to top because one end of the stack is fixed so the other end uh, of the stack is pointed by the pointer called top so top always points to the topmost element in the stack so please remember so whether it is push or pop the pointer through which you are going to push or pop is through the top of the stack and the element is deleted only from the top of the stack and at a time you can delete only one element whether it is pushing or popping at a time you can pop or push only one element at a time now coming to algorithm so how pop uh, is being implemented in stack so the name of the function is called pop so the element the stack from which you want to pop and here you need not mention which item the reason is because whichever position it is pointed by the top that topmost element will be deleted there is no other option so the topmost pointer will be deleted and the topmost element after deleting it is stored in the variable called item so your item is the variable which has been popped which is pointed by the uh, uh, position called top so first before removing an element from the stack so what is the condition you should check whether the stack is under flow what do you mean by stack under flow if you are trying to delete an element from the stack when the stack is empty so such condition we call it as underflow so check whether the whether stack is not empty or check whether the stack has item to be removed so how do you check whether the stack is underflow or whether the stack is empty if top is equal to minus 1 that means stack is empty so then print underflow and return that means you are trying to pop an element when the stack is empty such condition is called as underflow if this condition becomes false if top is not equal to minus 1 that means there are some elements in the stack then what is that you do whatever the element that is pointed on the top of the stack that is stack of the top now you will assign it to a variable called item so now this item is the one which you are going to remove and as soon as you remove your top should be decremented by one position so your top should the new top position now becomes top minus 1 because after removing the top position gets decremented so decremented by how many position by one position so as soon as you remove an element so removing is not something like physically you can't remove only the thing is you have to change your top position that itself will tell your element is been re removed just to tell you which item is was removed you are assigning it to a variable called item that's it otherwise uh, you cannot you are not physically removing an item from the stack you are just selling, uh, telling which is the item that is been popped so the topmost element you are assigning it to a variable called item that element gets deleted and then your top gets decremented by one position then return so this is how you perform the pop operation so coming to the function how pop is performed so uh, here the return type of the pop function is element because after removing the pop will display or pop will return which is the item that was removed okay and it is of type element so pop always returns an element uh, which is been removed or which is been popped out so now so in the first condition what is that you should check in the pop function whether the stack is empty so how do you check the stack is empty if top is equal to minus 1 return stack empty function so where you would have written some error message saying that stack is empty otherwise otherwise 
it will return stack of top whatever the element that is being stored on the top of the stack that will be returned and then the top gets decremented so either you can write like this or you can uh, you can write like this return stack of top and then you can say top minus minus so this this is how you can do it okay so what you do here so first you will return the topmost element okay so because you are telling which element is been popped out because this function will return an element which says which is the top of the stack that has been removed so whatever is whichever element is stored in the top of the stack so stack of top contains the element which is stored in the top of the stack that will be returned and after that you are decrementing the top by one position so top minus minus means the current Man, top position top minus minus does by not get current top position is 2 now after removing an element what will happen to your top top becomes 1 or if your top is at 3 after removing an element top becomes 2 so after removing so in pop operation first you remove the element and then decrement the top in push operation uh, push operation first increment the top and then push the operation it is reverse so please when you write the instructions uh, please be careful in pushing first increment the top and then push the element onto the new top position in pop first you pop the element and then decrement the top position so that is how you perform the push and the pop operation but please be careful in both push and pop operation first thing is you should in push operation you have to check for overflow condition in pop operation you have to check for underflow condition so checking whether the stack is already full is called as overflow checking whether the stack is empty while performing the pop operation is called as underflow so please remember these are the two conditions which you need to check whenever you perform push and pop operation you with the next thing is so the next thing is uh, so in the previous uh, 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 topic or in the previous method uh, the stack was implemented using a linear array so when i you uh, when i said linear array it is a static array where you need to define the size first only what is your maximum size so once uh, the maximum size exceeds then you cannot do push operation okay so that says your stack is already filled because uh, in static arrays you know uh, in linear arrays uh, whatever the size you need to create for the stack that should be decided during the compile time only during the run time you cannot change the size uh, assume uh, i have defined the stack size as 5 so how many elements you can store it in the stack only five elements starting from the position 0 to 4 once your top reaches fourth position that means your stack is full no more you can perform the push operation so that is the limitation of the stack using linear arrays because we need to know the maximum stack size at the compile time only and that uh, once the size exceeds i mean to say once the size uh, reaches the threshold value you cannot uh, increase the size of the stack because during the run time you cannot change the size of the stack so that is the limitation of the static arrays so how to overcome this is using dynamically allocated arrays so instead of implementing the stack using linear arrays you can implement the stack using dynamic arrays which we already discussed in the first module what's the difference between static arrays and dynamic arrays so dynamic arrays uh, where the size and the allocation will be done during the run time no need to have the prefix or no need to have predefined size of the array during the compile time so you can increase the size of the array or you can increase the number of elements in the array during the run time because you will not have an uh, uh, predefined size of the array in dynamic arrays and uh, you know how do you implement dynamic arrays using malloc functions or using calloc functions that is that is how any dynamic memory allocations are done with the, these three function one is malloc calloc or realloc so so similarly you can implement your stack using dynamic arrays so now this is how you can uh, uh, implement the stack using dynamic arrays so only the thing is you will not have max stack size here please remember the way you had in linear uh, arrays so if at all if you are implementing the stack using dynamic arrays 
it is been uh, the memory for the stack is allocated dynamically using malloc functions so how to create the stack using dynamic arrays similar like what we done using linear arrays type def struct int key element element star stack because you will not have the name to the uh, dynamic memory allocation please remember the only way you can access the dynamic arrays is using pointer so your stack is a pointer which points to the structure variable of type element please remember any memory location which is dynamically allocated will not have a name like in the previous example we had a name called stack um, stack was the name of the array okay but whereas whenever uh, in in dynamic arrays you will not have a name to the array but the memory that is allocated dynamically will be pointed by a pointer so your stack is a pointer which points to an structure variable of type element so then how the uh, how do you create this stack so there we created this stack like we had maximum stack size so here we created uh, we are going to create this stack by using the malloc function malloc uh, uh, the memory is pointed by the pointer called stack comma how much memory will be allocated depending on the size of the stack so size of start stack so when i say size of start stack in this example what is the size of the uh, pointer it is like in the structure you have only int key it is of 2 bytes so that means every memory location will be of 2 bytes then the 2 bytes will be allocated and it will be pointed by, by a point called stack then here instead of having maximum stack size we replace with another variable called capacity so this capacity it tells you what is the maximum size so when you allocate memory dynamically how much uh, how many elements you can store initially that value can be stored in the variable called capacity now since we are uh, uh, since we are uh, creating only one element at a time so initially your capacity will be one okay and your top will be pointing to minus 1 initially your stack will be minus 1 and your capacity is equal to 1 and then as and then during the run time you can add as many number of elements because you are going to allocate using the function called malloc and whenever we use malloc this can be called dynamically during the run time and you are going to insert an element into the stack or you are going to allocate the memory for that element and then you can perform the push operation and that is how you can and how many elements are there in the stack or what is the size of the stack that can be uh, kept track by using the variable called capacity no again in the dynamic arrays so if uh, to check whether uh, the boolean whether the stack is empty or the stack is full so because once we create and once we start pushing and popping so here you can check whether the stack is empty by using the condition called top less than 0 or top is equal to minus 1 either you can say top less than 0 or you can say top is equal to minus 1 both are same because uh, anything less than 0 is minus 1 so once your top becomes minus 1 that says your stack is empty and once uh, and how do you check whether the stack is full whenever the top reaches greater than or equal to capacity minus 1 so once you start creating the elements here only the thing is instead of uh, what you call it as um, uh, i i mean to say uh, instead of uh, max stack size we are we are using the variable called capacity which tells you how many elements are stored in the stack at a time so once that capac uh, top reaches capacity minus 1 the stack gets full so then the same thing like push and pop operation so push tells you how to push an element the same thing what we had discussed earlier only the thing is wherever max stack size is there we replace with the word called capacity so if top is greater than or equal to capacity minus 1 the stack is full otherwise increment the top first and push an element into stack so that is push operation similarly pop if the top is minus 1 then return the stack is empty otherwise Uh, return the stack of top and then decrement the top so this is how you do the pop but only the thing is in dynamic arrays what happens is whenever the stack uh, so we we can increase the capacity of the array okay so because like uh, what we can do is once the stack gets filled up okay then you can increase the capacity by uh, by doubling the size of the stack so we can use the function called realloc okay earlier you had allocated some five uh, for five elements assume your capacity is five okay 
now uh, uh, during the run time after uh, running if you feel that you want to insert some more elements into the stack you can call the function called realloc where whatever was the capa earlier capacity you can just double the size of the, the capacity of the stack where you can just call the function whenever the stack is full so assume your capacity is 5 so initially you had pushed five elements into the stack now if you want to push the sixth element into the stack now the size is already the stack is already full now as soon as the stack becomes full you will call this function where you will reallocate the size of the stack so how do you reallocate the size of the stack dynamically so you can call the function called realloc the stack the stack the original stack by how much size you are going to increase twice the capacity whatever whatever was your earlier capacity you are increment you are doubling so this this is called as uh, array doubling so whatever was your earlier size of the array now you are doubling the size of the array if earlier size was 5 now it becomes 10 so 2 into 5 into each element will be of size of stack so in that case uh, each stack element was of size 2 bytes because we are storing one element so it is size of 2 so it is 2 into 5 into 2 so th that becomes the new allocated memory and now the capacity is been doubled so every time your stack gets full now you are reallocating the memory and this concept is called as array doubling which can be done using dynamic memory allocation using realloc which cannot be done using the uh, static linear arrays okay so that is how dynamic arrays are uh, useful and which we can implement using malloc and realloc functions